Did you know that you can create a digital version of yourself or an AI character with only one image? Typically, to create consistent images of a character, whether it's yourself or a character that you've created or a pet, usually requires you to train or fine tune an AI model to get good results. However, there are a few tools and technologies that allow you to do this with only one image. In the past, that used to be a tool called IP Adapter, which worked very well with Stable Diffusion. If you want to learn more about it, you can check out this incredibly detailed video over here. However, since Flux has come into the picture, there hasn't really been a great option to do the same kind of thing that you could do with Stable Diffusion. That is, until now. Within the span of about four weeks, both Tencent and ByteDance released their own versions of being able to create multiple images of a person with only one source image. Today, we're gonna to be looking at ByteDance solution called Infinite U. I have another video I'm working on, which looks at Tencent's solution called Instant Character. And then I have another video where we're gonna compare IP adapter, Infinite U, and Instant Character to see which one gives the best results when working with only one image. Tencent's and ByteDance's solutions are built to work with Flux. And while IP Adapter works very well with Stable Diffusion XL, it can also work with Flux. So we'll be comparing all three. And since these are tools designed to run alongside Flux, hopefully we can also modify them to work with Hydream. So I'm hopeful that somebody from the community will make that project happen. So for today with Infinite U, we're gonna look at how to run it on Kaijugen, my own image generation platform, run it on your own RunPod instance, and finally, how to install it locally on your own machine. However, be warned, it does have a 46 gigabyte VRAM requirement, but there are options to quantize that down to about 16 gigs, which I'll get into later. So as I mentioned, Kaijugen is my own image and video generation platform. It's something I put together to easily test out and store all kinds of image and video models that I've scoured from across the internet, whether it's open source, closed source through an API. I just find it easier to have everything in one place because then I can, for example, take images that I've created in a handful of models and then feed them into a whole bunch of video models, Kling, Luma, Runway, and so on. I've even got GPT-4O's image generator on here. So if you don't have a subscription and you want to try it out, please do consider checking out KaijuGen as it really helps the channel out. So over here, you can select between the image and video model. And you can see here, we've got Infinite U. And what we're going to do is we'll upload an image and test out the same prompt as well as the seed on both the G Radio RunPod installation and the Kaiju Gen 1 so that we can compare the results. As with many AI models, depending on the hardware that you use, even the same seed can produce subtly different results. So even on RunPod, when you spin up the G Radio multiple times or Comfy UI, you could see small differences between generations just because you're running it on a different GPU. Now for the base character that we're gonna use and try and create more images from, over here on Kaiju Gen, I've actually got a character generator. So we're gonna use a character that I created earlier. There's a bunch of presets here to help you create and design a character and then you can use it over on the main page. So let's go ahead and grab infinite yield. Let's open up the advanced parameters. Let's grab the image of the character that I created earlier, which is this one right here for reference. I created this character on High Dream, I believe. Let's drop in our prompt over here. A fantasy character portrait, mythical setting, magical forest background, glowing aura, detailed fantasy clothing, portrait 4K high quality cinematic. Now, one of the cool things that we can do with instant character is you can also add in a control image. And this is a pose that you want your character to have. So it's got a kind of control net built into it. And we'll test that out later. For now, we just want to see how the character looks compared to the original image. Down here in the advanced parameters, we can pick the model version. So Infinite U comes with two models. One is Sim Stage 1 and the other one is S Stage 2. The difference between these is that Sim Stage 1 results in a image that's more accurate to the character or image that you uploaded. Whereas AES stage two gives the model a little bit more creativity and freedom. And the consequence of that is that the final image may look a little bit less like your original character. So test them both out and see which one you prefer. We've got our width and height. We're gonna leave these as is, as I want a portrait image. Same thing, number of steps, we're gonna leave that at 30, which is a pretty good number for floods. Guidance scale, three and a half. We're going to leave the anti-blur and realism LoRa's off. So these are two LoRa's that come with the model that you can use if you're having difficulties getting a more realistic image or you're having too much blurriness in the image. 
Now I do have a bit of a visual bug on Kaiju Gen, which I'm fixing. As you can see, the control image node is repeated here. You can go ahead and ignore that. Just use the one that's up here at the top. It should be gone in the next day or so. We can pick our output format. And then there are a couple of important parameters here that we need to consider. Specifically, the InfuseNet guidance start and end. You wanna keep this at zero or 0 or 0.01 and your end at one. However, if you wanna improve the likeness of the final image even more, you can bring this down to 0 0.9 and this up to 0 0.1. And what that does is it injects the identity slightly later and stops forcing the model one step before the end. And that can result in better images. However, we're gonna leave it at the default for now. So we've got everything set. We are gonna set the seed to 999999, that's nine, six times, and let it run. You'll see here generation started successfully, and we can see here that there's a placeholder for the image processing. We'll come back to that and compare the results with the run pod option. So if you don't wanna use Kaiju Gen and you prefer to spin up your own hardware on run pod, I have a link down below for both a template and a signup link. If you don't have a RunPod account, please do consider using that link as it helps give me credits on RunPod, which help me create more tutorials. So if you click on the link down below, that is the template link, which will open up a page like this. And you can choose the hardware that you want. Now, the template that I have works on the full version of Infinite U. And for that, I recommend that you come down here to previous gen and grab the A100 PCIe GPU. Theoretically, this should work on the A40 and A6000. However, I find the VRAM requirements to be a little tight for my taste. And I have found that sometimes you can get an out of memory error. So I just like to go with the 80 gigabyte A100 and I've not had any problems come up. Now I am working on making this template work with the quantized versions. So you can work with a lower VRAM GPU if you like bringing your cost down. Once that's done, I will probably put out an update on my Discord. So if you want to know more about that, please join the Discord or sign up for my newsletter on my website. I will start rolling out a newsletter with updates like these. So go ahead and grab your A100 PCIe. And before you click on Deploy On Demand, you need to go into Edit Template, Public Environment Variables, and you'll see here Hugging Face Token. You need to head on over to huggingface.co, come up here, click on Access Tokens, and then create a new token. Go ahead and click on read, give it a token name. I usually do run pod, create the token and you'll get a access key over here. Head on back here and drop that in. Once you've done that, also make sure you go back to Hugging Face, look for the Black Forest Labs Flux.1 dev model and accept the agreement if you haven't done so already. This is because Infinite U downloads the Flux dev model as part of its whole setup. And if you haven't accepted the agreement and use the API key to let the app know that you've agreed, you won't be able to download the model and you'll get hit with an error. So make sure you do that. Make sure you've got your API key here. Click set overrides and go ahead and click deploy on demand. Now I have a pod here from earlier. And if you click on logs, this is what your logs should look like. It will take a while to download as it has to download a whole bunch of models, but once you start, you'll get a bunch of lines like this. And what you're looking for is this line that says starting infinite U. And once you see that, you'll still need to wait a little bit longer. You can click out, come here to connect and click on 7860, right? And even though it doesn't say ready, you can keep trying to click it and eventually you'll get a page that looks like this. As I mentioned earlier, I have it set up from before. This is our AI generated character along with the prompt the same seed, all of the same settings, and this is the result that we got. Let's go back to Kaiju Gen and have a look and see what we got. And if we look at the results, I'd say they're pretty spot on. All three of them have a very good resemblance to the original character. They've got the same eyes, the same hair, relatively the same facial structure. I would say the one that came from Kaiju Gen, which is this central one, did slightly better as this one from the run pod seems to have a slightly stronger jawline. But overall, I'd say the results are great so far. And that's how you get Infinite U running on the cloud. So next, how do you get this running on your own computer? Well, fortunately, the steps are fairly straightforward. Now, while I am showing you how to install this on a Mac, the same instructions should work whether you're on Windows or Linux. So please do follow along. And if you have any questions, please do come by the Discord. 
I do try and respond to comments whenever I can, but if you do want the quickest response, please try it out in the Discord as not only I, but other community members can try and help you out. So once you have the folder where you want to install Infinite U, go ahead and open up your terminal. You can do this in a variety of different ways. If you're in a Mac, right click down here and click open in terminal. If you're on Linux, you can right click anywhere on the folder and likewise open in terminal. And if you're in Windows, at the very top, somewhere around here, you should have your address bar. Go ahead and click it and just type in CMD. It should erase whatever's there. Click enter and that will open the terminal in your computer. If I have a clip of this running on Windows, I will show it here. Once you've got your terminal open in your desired folder, go to the Infinite U GitHub. Again, I'll have the link down below. Click over here on code and copy this URL. There's a little button here where you can click copy. Go back to your terminal and type in git clone and paste that URL. That will download all of the Infinite U files down over to your computer. If you look at the folder, you'll see a folder here called Infinite U. Once you've downloaded Infinite U, type in CD Infinite U and that will put you in the correct folder. Now, you don't have to do this, but it is considered best practices. So I strongly recommend you create a virtual environment. So to do that, you're going to go ahead and type in Python M vend ven. And what this will do is it will create a folder which contains your virtual environment called venv. And this makes it easy to activate later. In case you don't know what a virtual environment is, a closed off environment where you can install dependencies and other things that are required for your particular app that don't mess with the installation of your computer. And if you have other AI apps like Comfy, and if you have other Python apps like Comfy UI and other AI tools installed, those dependencies don't mess with each other, especially if some of them have different versions for the same dependency. So go ahead and do that. It'll take a couple of seconds and then you'll get a line like this. Now, the method to activate this is different for Linux and Windows. On Mac or Linux, you just wanna do source the folder name for the virtual environment. In this case, it's venv slash bin slash activate. And then you'll see a line here that says venv base and then your address, that means you're in the virtual environment. For Windows, you'll instead want to just type in venv slash scripts slash activate and press enter. That is a script that will activate the virtual environment for you. If for whatever reason you are getting an error in your infinite U folder, you should see a folder called venv. Go ahead and open that, then go to scripts and then you'll see a little icon called activate. Drag that into your terminal you'll get a full address and just press enter. And that should get you into the virtual environment. It should look very similar to this where you've got venv, base, and so on. Anyway, like I said, if you've got issues or problems, come by the Discord. We'll do our best to help you out. Once you've got your virtual environment set up, go ahead and type in pip install r requirements.txt. Before you press enter, make sure that you are in the infinite U folder. This is the one that you downloaded. If you're not sure, type in ls if you're on mac or linux dir if you're on window that's dir like this and you'll get a list of all the files in your folder you want to make sure that requirements.txt is there if it is as i mentioned earlier type in pip install r requirements.txt press enter and that will install all of the dependencies that you need for that this might take a couple of minutes so go ahead grab a cup of coffee wait once that's done you want to go ahead and type in pip install dash u open brackets hugging face underscore hub bracket cli close bracket and then the double quotations go ahead and do that really quickly that that will allow us to download the flux model when we start it up once that's done type in once that's done head on over to hugging face and grab your access token just like i showed you earlier go ahead and click copy go back to your terminal and type in hugging face dash C CLI space login. And then it will ask you for an access token. Press command V if you're on a Mac, control V if you're on Linux or Windows. Don't worry, nothing will appear here on the terminal. That's perfectly fine. Click enter, add token as a Git credential, hit N for no. And then you'll see there something called login successful and then what the active token is. Once you've done that, go ahead and type in python app.py. And that will start up infinite U and we'll start downloading the models. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you are running a GPU that isn't a super powerful 48 gigabyte GPU, you have a few options available to you. 
if after app.py you add in dash dash cpu underscore cpu underscore offload that will balance out the ram usage with your gpu and cpu allowing you to bring down your vram requirement to 30 gigabytes that now puts you in the realm of a rtx 5090 if you want to push things further however you can do quantize underscore 8 bit instead which brings you down to a 24 gigabyte GPU requirement. This should theoretically work with a 3090 or 4090. However, you are using the GPU VRAM at 100%. So I don't know if you will have issues. My own 3090 doesn't like it when I push the GPU usage to 100%. So your mileage may vary. But if you are using a 5090, it does give you a bit more breathing room, but you are using the quantized model, which could have worse results. If you do end up using this flag, please do let me know in the description below. Please do let me know in the Discord. Please post your results. I would love to know how the quantized 8-bit is performing for you. And finally, if you are down to a 16 gigabyte GPU or your 24 gigabyte GPU is still struggling with this, you can go ahead and add in quantize 8-bit and dash dash CPU underscore offloading and that will bring you down to about 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Press enter and it will start downloading the appropriate models based on the flag that you've chosen. Now unfortunately this Mac has problems running infinite use so I can't show it to you running on this console but once it's done you should get a HTTP 0.0.0.0 link in your logs. Go ahead and click that you might need to press command or control click to open a new browser window and you should get a G radio that looks just like this and you should be able to run it on your local machine. Again, if you're having problems, please do come by the Discord and ask your questions. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please do consider liking and subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And if you really want to support the channel, please do consider supporting me on Patreon or trying out or trying out Kaijugen. Both of those help support the channel financially and helps me make more videos like this. And if you have any questions, please do come by the Discord, as I've mentioned before. Share your work. We'd love to see what you're doing. Ask questions and somebody from the community will do their best to help you out. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any updates, please do consider subscribing to my newsletter on the website. It's a little irregular as I try not to spam you guys, but I am trying to put out an update every two to four weeks with the latest videos, latest AI news, and so on. So if that's interesting for you, please do sign up. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.